So they say that 80% of your problems come from 20% of your life. So last year I started slowing down my auto repair business and this year I completely closed it. It is shut down. And by doing so, it literally made me over a million dollars last year. This is not a gimmick. I'm seriously telling you that me shutting down my auto repair business last year made me over a million extra dollars in one year. I'm gonna tell you all about it in this video. Let's get going. Well, hey everyone, my name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Welcome to my Flying Wheels YouTube channel. I own a small car dealership in a small town in New Hampshire, and we do really well. I do well enough to pay my bills, to take care of my family. I have a couple employees that I can keep happy, and I get to drive a lot of fun cars. Cars are my passion, cleaning them, fixing them, selling them, well, whatever. Being a used car dealer isn't that grand, but I love buying cars like this one right here. My supercharged 6.2 liter V8. Cadillac CTSV, I have a GTO, I have all kinds of fun stuff that makes me like my job. But the things about my job I don't like, fixing other people's problems. It is an absolute nightmare. Now I just read a book that said 80% of your problems come from 20% of your life. So it works in life, it works in business. Think about those 80% of your problems. Really mine was fixing other people's problems fixing cars, right? You're a professional problem solver. It was absolutely freezing outside. I had to come inside and finish this video up. So this year I shut down my auto repair business and it has made me so happy. It is literally making me happy to tell customers, I'm sorry, I can't take your business. It feels good to be in a point where I can actually do that and it wasn't that easy up front. It took a year's worth of work to kind of glide everything out, smooth everything out and build the other half. Now, when I had said 80% of your headaches come from 20% of your business, it's really true. If you think about the people that make you the most money are typically the easiest people to work with or your best customers. So if they're making you the most money, why not focus on those people alone? If there's a single part of your business making you the most money, why not just focus on that part? Well, I am not a mechanic. If you've watched my videos before, you know I absolutely hate working on cars. If you've ever worked with mechanics, you can hear them in the background, it's difficult to find and hire solid mechanics. It's not about the money, it's about the industry. It's really difficult in general to find a solid mechanic or a technician. And if you're a good technician, you're worth the money and it's worth paying them for it, but it's hard to find them because I live in a small town, I have a small shop. They're inherently going to go to better dealerships. Think about the new car dealerships. They're paying more, they have better benefits. They're able to pay their employees more money, which means my employees start to maybe chip away. Now, yes, I closed my auto repair business and I kept my car dealership and that's what made me more money. But this video isn't about me making more money because I closed my auto repair facility. It's about how I found what I like to do and what makes me the most money and I set all of my focus on that rather than the 20% that gave me the 80% of my headaches. And once I did this, everything changed. So after doing all my numbers, Two years ago, I was doing roughly $150,000 in auto service work. Now doing service work, I had lots and lots of tickets. Now before I get to how I made a million plus dollars in one year by just doing this one thing, I wanna show you a couple quick examples first. So I'm actually gonna give you a few examples. This Chevy Suburban right here, the customer is an absolutely great woman. I really like working with her, great person to work with, but I'm fixing her problem. The Chevy Suburban is leaking fuel and it's rusty underneath. So the gas tank straps are rusty as well, which means once we remove them, we're not gonna be able to reuse them. So I scheduled her in two weeks out because we were two weeks behind on service work. Well, after she brought it in, she told me it was a 2008 Chevy Suburban. She did not tell me it was a 2008 Chevy Suburban 2500, which means it's a completely different vehicle than what I ordered parts for. Now, that's not her fault. It's, you know, it's kind of my fault. Maybe I should have asked, is it a 1500 or 2500? But I almost never see 2500 Chevy Suburbans. So the Chevy Suburban fuel pump and gas tank straps that I ordered are completely different than what this vehicle needs. So now she needs her vehicle back to go on a ski trip this week, but 
the gas tank straps for this truck are on back order for two weeks. So now I have to call her and let her know and apologize. Hey, I'm sorry, I ordered the parts for a 1500, not a 2500, because I didn't know it was a 2500. You're not gonna get your truck for at least five to seven business days because the straps are on back order. Now, guess what? She's a great lady, but she's probably pissed at me. And that's not my fault that she's upset because the straps are on back order. That's out of my control, just like it's out of her control. While it's in here and she dropped it off, she said, hey, it kind of has a power steering leak as well. Can you figure that out? So we had it looked at yesterday with the power steering leak. Well, it needs a high pressure line. So that took four and a half hours on the lift yesterday. It was actually a lot of work because the truck's really rusty. The power steering pump had to come out. Well, while it's on the lift, we could have been doing our own vehicles. We could have been working on our own vehicles that we're going to sell and make more money on. That's my next example. This power steering line will make me, I'm probably going to charge roughly around $400 for this power steering line. So yes, we made after parts, after labor, after shop expenses. How much am I going to make? $120 maybe on that power steering line? Big deal. Let's say Let's go to this Denali, that's my truck right here. This GMC Yukon Denali is going to make me roughly $2,000 when we sell it and it needed a motor mount. So guess what? Yesterday, the motor mount didn't get done because the Suburban was on the lift. So for me to make $120 on that Chevy Suburban power steering leak, I didn't make $2,000 because that Yukon Denali is not ready for sale yet. Do you see what I'm getting at? Now let's get to the employees having mechanics as an employee, it's difficult, it's unreliable, it's difficult to find a mechanic. Guess what I did? This morning I set up a state inspection with a customer at 10 a.m. We open at 10 a.m. on Saturday, it's $40 for a state inspection. Some people, even though they're 37 years old, like to sleep till 10 a.m. on a work day and show up late. Hey, 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 hey. So guess what? That customer was pissed at me and I had to apologize this morning because we couldn't do his inspection right away. So I had to rush over here even though I had other things to do outside of the shop to get here and do his inspection. Now, going back to how that $40 isn't as important as me selling cars, this is the perfect example. That state inspection was $40. He's a mechanic, he's gonna do all of his own work even if we find something wrong. So part of owning an auto repair facility is you do a state inspection. If it needs something, usually you get the work. Now that customer is his own mechanic, so all he's doing is giving me $40. So at the very most, I charge him $40, I have to pay all my shop expenses and pay for the machine and the inspection and the internet. I don't make any money on state inspections. So let's go to what happened. German, who's in that F-150 right there, is an amazing salesman. At 10 a.m. I had set an appointment up for him to show a Ford Escape. Well, that Ford Escape is going to make us $1,500 to $2,000. So $40 state inspection or a $2,000 Ford Escape. Now you see what I'm getting at, right? Now being a mechanic or having an auto repair shop means you're constantly fixing other people's problems. And with problems comes more problems. So if they show up for a fuel pump leak and I tell them they need gas tank straps as well, they're gonna be unhappy because they probably budgeted a certain amount and then I had to tell them it was more money. This truck behind me, the customer tried to play with his headlights and repair his headlights or wire in something and ruined his entire wiring harness. So we are two hours into diag time to try to figure out just what's going on. Then we found out that the wiring harness was ruined. And it's part of the headlight assembly and it's proprietary. So you can only get it from the dealer, it's $700. And now he's mad at me because his headlight and wiring harness are so expensive to fix and doesn't want to pay me for my diag time. Well. These are all small ticket items. Now, if I can sell one car in two days and make $2,000 off of it, or I can do lots of small repair jobs in two days, you're probably looking at four repair jobs a day, oil changes, inspections, brake work. That's eight customers in two days versus one customer in two days. And you're making significantly more money off selling the car. Now, if I'm focusing on four to six customers per day, filling up their tires, doing their oil change, fixing their brakes, doing state inspections. That stuff adds up and it's extremely time consuming and it's a new invoice per customer. So it's calling in parts, it's making sure the deliveries are set up, it's dealing with the mechanic for each 
vehicle over and over and over, making sure they have everything they need, calling the customer to set up the appointment, calling the customer to have them come in, making a bill for them, and then giving them and having them pay for the vehicle. It's a lot of work over and over and over per customer. And then if there's a problem, I have to call them and then it takes up space at my shop and it ties up a parking spot, it ties up a spot on the lift. It's a lot of work. Not to mention they always think you're cheating them anyway. If I replace a wiper for them and their brakes start squeaking a week later, guess who they blame? Well, I was here last week. It's just coincidental that now my brakes are squeaking. Well, here's a perfect example of why I don't need customers. I don't want them anymore. So this Saturn, we did a brake job on. Drums and shoes, we did it last week. It's not a ton of money. It doesn't make a ton of money. It just takes up our time. It ties up our lift. Well, a week later, customer comes back and says, there's a noise in his car. It's gotta be from our work. Spin the wheel. Completely quiet. So now, on a Saturday, instead of doing work that would make us money, we now have to bring this guy's car in, put it up on the lift, take the drums off, inspect everything, and then listen to it to find out that, that there is no noise. So basically we're doing a job twice for him because he heard something that could have been from us. So let's just say I have six customers a day with all that work, I can't focus on the car that actually makes me money. Let's say that Ford Escape didn't get on the lift until today to get repaired, then I'm gonna sell retail because the Suburban was tying up the lift all day yesterday. Now you can see how the $120 I made off the Suburban actually cost me money because I didn't get my Ford Escape ready for sale. That could have been a customer's car that came in and purchased it today and I would have made $1,800 to $2,000 off of it. Now think about it, if you're doing small tickets over and over and over, you can make some money that way and it's there but you can't focus on the other items that make more money. So when I said the 20% makes up for 80% of your headaches, I do 20% of my business as outside service. That is where 80% of my headaches came from. So when I got rid of it, when I closed the shop, I could focus on my own inventory. I wanna show you an example. Here's my pile of sold paperwork. This is 2019. This is when I had a repair shop. This is how many cars I could sell in a year. This is 2020. You can see it's double the amount of sales in just a year. It's because I could focus my time on getting more cars fixed, cleaned, and sold. So once I could focus my time on things that actually made me more money and not too much time on the things that didn't make me a lot of money, I started to make more money. Pretty simple, right? Now today if I had just shown up to my shop on a Saturday at 10 a.m. and I had a customer here looking at a car, I would be happy. That would be great for me. But instead, I showed up at 10 a.m. to have a mechanic not here. I showed up to have an inspection that was not gonna make me any money here with an unhappy customer. And I had a customer here to look at a car tying up someone else's time. So all of it compiles to one giant headache when it could have just been a lot easier having one of my cars in the garage Getting work done, if the mechanic wasn't here and showed up late, no big deal, really. He's gonna show up and he's gonna get our stuff done. But when there's a customer waiting in the parking lot, it puts a lot of pressure on both of us because I have to then tell him, I'm sorry, my employee showed up late or make up some type of excuse that really isn't needed and it's pretty unprofessional. Now I wanna start by saying I absolutely love my customers. That's the part of the auto repair side that I actually really like. I love that my customers get to sit in my office with me and chat while their car is getting worked on, while I'm working on the computer. It builds a lot of relationships and when I go to the local watering hole, when I go to the restaurants around town, I get to bump into people that I get to see all the time and I know them by their cars and it's fun for me to have just small conversations with everybody around town and essentially you're kind of doing favors for people which I really like that part I get to know everybody in town and say hi and when I see them at the grocery store they smile and they say hello to me I like that part and I like the customers and I like the community and building relationships in the community but I don't like being the problem solver for everybody that's difficult think about it you are a professional problem solver it is up to you to fix other people's problems so do you really want your job to be problems. I have enough problems in my life that I need to fix that I don't need to be constantly fixing everyone else's problems too, even if it's their car's 
problems. And the worst part is it never ends. There's always going to be more problems for you to fix and it really wears you down. So here's how I made that extra million dollars that I was talking about at the beginning of this video. When I stopped focusing on the headaches, when I stopped focusing on the things that didn't make me happy, I became more passionate about the things that do make me happy and I had more time to focus on those things that made me more happy and actually made me more money so I could focus on the things that made me more money, which also made me happy. And then it took away the headaches that weren't making me happy. So I made more money and I was happy in the end. So I started transitioning by taking just one customer a day in auto repair. And then I started transitioning to every other day and then maybe two customers a week. And then maybe now I just take the good customers. So if I know I like them, if I know I want them as a customer, if I know they pay their bills on time and they don't complain about it, I still want their business. And then as the year went on, I started to slow down that side of the business and we really took off and my parking lot is overfilled with cars that are ready for sale now and they're moving and you can see by the pile behind me that we've doubled our business in sales because I reduced my business in service and that was a hard decision for me because I always said to myself geez how can I just throw away hundred and fifty thousand dollars in service work that hundred and fifty thousand dollars in service work that I lost made me over a million dollars in additional gross revenue. Now, when I say a million dollars, that's before expenses, that's before purchasing the cars, and that's everything. That's the very top. So my sales increased by over a million dollars when I reduced the side that was the headache. When I focused on the things that were making me more money, I made more money. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it was entertaining or educational, and I hope it was insightful for you guys if you're trying to make your decisions of what you should be doing. And it doesn't just go with the auto repair and car dealerships. It doesn't matter what you're doing in life. Find that 20% that's making 80% of your headaches and get rid of it and focus on the 20% that's making you happy and 80% of your problems will be solved. I hope this video was helpful.